Training apex level hypnotherapists and psychotherapists since 1988, the Institute for Psychosystems Analysis is now accepting applications for CADA 3 of our professional training course, taught online by Steve, Pauline, and myself. If you resonate with the material on Young to Live By and believe that your calling is to be a therapist, then check out the link to our course webpage in the description. We look forward to welcoming you on board in June of this year, 2021. Okay, and this question comes from Grail Squire, and he says, is it possible to, de to develop symptoms of schizotypal personality from iatrogenic effects of prescribed use of amphetamine? Minus the hallucinatory or delusional symptoms, I find myself in a state of social withdrawal and fear, and I do have extroverted intuition, so I somewhat have thoughts that could be classified as wacko produced. I believe my endeavour into the chaos that arises from recognising the actuality of my personality and being only 17 has also contributed to my feelings of existential anxiety. How do I make sure that I don't lose anything while I still continue into my research? What should I avoid for now and what can I do to help myself at this point? I feel like my ego boundaries are very weak and I do not know why that is what scares me the most. I do not know how to help myself. Would the next logical step be to work on discovering my personal myth? I believe you've got something to say about this, Steve. Yeah, um, people don't develop evenly. Uh, they develop like this. And I don't mean that way, but that way. So when um, you meet a person, whatever age they are, you, some features on them will be more advanced and others, and I'll use the expression, will be more retarded with re respect to those factors which are advanced. It's only through time that this catches up itself up. It's like sawtooth. Eventually, the whole thing will meet. That's individuation and that's maturity. The problem can be when we're young that those parts of us that are precocious are like the, if you like, the tip of the, the sawtooth on the blade and that impacts the world first, but it's not supported. It stands out and it's vulnerable. It's vulnerable along its flanks as well as at its, its spear point, at, at the actual tip. This is probably what's happening for you, that you probably have a lot of potential, but you have no opportunity yet, given your age. Uh, and given the fact that at that age you haven't been able to actualize enough of your, yourself across the wider bandwidth mm -hmm. in order for you to make sense to yourself, of yourself, never mind to anybody else. Um, other people will expect you to be 17, but you'll feel instinctive pressure from within to complete yourself as quickly as possible. It's also fairly obvious you've been exposed to quite a lot of ideas out there on the internet. I, I can see the, yes. the footprints of certain people in there, shall we say, yep. in, the, in the way that you're, um, you're articulating yourself. Um, I think you're getting ahead of yourself in some senses and are getting behind yourself in others. Yes. So I would think very much in terms of balancing that equation. Um, Acknowledging that you have ability, acknowledging that you have potential, but at the moment you're out of kilter with your environment, your external environment. And that being out of kilter will mean that your libido will inrush and it will start to charge up the ideas that you've acquired through your learning in your life thus far. And in charging them up, it will overamp them and that will generate an issue on the inside because they will be competing for your life force. Uh, and you'll have little opportunity to actualize them out in the world. So, yeah, that would be how I would say to look at yourself in the here and now. With respect to discovering your personal myth, that will help you to anchor your through line so you can make sense of yourself. Absolutely. So the first part of it would be understand where you're at now with respect to having an uneven level of development, and that's entirely normal. Uh, look at the kind of things that are influencing you and how they may be over-amping aspects of yourself and getting you out of balance with your environment. Um, understand that this will make you a little bit 
unusual in, inside yourself with respect to yourself because how do you make sense of this <clears throat> we all have a sense of continuity or we should do and then when we feel out of kilter of our environment that sense of continuity is affected negatively very often so the value of the personal myth would be to uncover your through line and about how you arrived at where you are at now with respect to understanding who you are and being a little bit more patient with yourself as you catch up psychosocially with what you're capable of intellectually. So yeah, I would work on the personal myth um, and take it from there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily close to 17, but, you know, I was 17 seven years ago or so. I remember what it was like to be 17. And that's not to say my experience would be the same as yours, mate. But I would say that the most masculine thing you could possibly do would be to throw away all of the nonsense that you've learned from what people have told you. You, I, obviously, I, I wouldn't know your, your full context, but obviously you at 17, your libido is drawn to X, Y, Z, and that kind of INTP or any TI way of, colloquial anyway, understanding things, which we probably share in that respect. And so what you are focusing on now is probably not the same as when you were 16, 15, 14, or 13, but you still exist underneath. You can imagine to yourself, just, just as a thought experiment, what would I be doing if I did not expose myself to this person, or this thing, or this person? And another way to sort of buffer the, the NE and the, and the TI logic that seems to be going on here is like, well, why are certain ideas resonating more than others? And the answer is not, this is not to accuse you of anything, the answer is not, these are the most significant questions I could ever ask myself. Such as, as you phrased it, you've, you're diving into the chaos that is arising from recognising the actuality of your personality, and more specifically, what's faulty about it. It's like, well, first of all, there's nothing faulty about your personality by no. default. I love the way that you are framing it, where there are some things that are more developed and yeah. some things that are less, yeah. just as a nature of what's been coming out of you over the course of your life, what's been encouraged, what psychosocial niches have you been in. If you throw away all of the nonsense and test yourself psychosocially, that would be the thing I would personally invite you to do. Because as I'm at 24 years old, I look back at, say, my own personal myth so far, which obviously is not particularly long so far, but the things which really stand out are not the ideas or discovering the actuality of my personality in the way that it's phrased. It's not diving into chaos. It was not any of the, the things I was once interested in, Nietzsche and the, the more mystical side of Jung and what it, uh, Dante and medieval history, whatever it was. It was the relationships I made. And it doesn't have to be romantic either. It's the relationships you make and the things you do in the real world. What you'll find as well is as you start to do that, you may you imagine that your, your libido in that, in, that um, in a Jungian sense is like a battery. Well, currently most of it's going towards these ideas. Mm. It's like, well, as you start to actualize in the world, you'll find that naturally from your unconscious, that libido is not going to these, these kind of things. It's going towards things that are making you feel good. Not in a hedonistic sense, like you know these types of philosophies and things would buffer against, but feel good in meaning that this is where I should be. Your instincts are on your side. That's what I would definitely, definitely encourage to do. Because then when you look back on your personal myth and say, you're 24, you'd be like, well, I've got this whole suite of memories. And I didn't do that to the extent I should have done, which is why I feel passionately about this. I was distracted by so much stuff as well, as well. So that would be my invitation. Yeah, I agree. If you're looking to take your study of depth psychology and personal development to the next level using Steve and Pauline's 40 year long clinical experience as your personal guide, then make sure you check out Young to Live By's flagship offering, Discover Your Personal Myth Ultimate Handbook. For anyone who has a calling deep in their very genome to become who they truly feel they should be, this guide is utterly indispensable. Pick up your copy today and make 2021 the year you truly begin to become yourself.